Hello and welcome to the networking floor of PTC25, where I'm now joined by Anubhav Braj, Chief Investment Officer at uh, Line Data Centers and Braj. Pleasure seeing you again in yeah. the beautiful Hawaii. How many PCs have you got in your pocket at this stage? Uh, we're not quite at double digits, but it's getting there close. <laughs> <laughs> we actually were actually talking about the differences of the conference over the years and how it's changed oh. and it really became a financing investment uh, hub for, for bankers. I know, for better or for worse. I enjoyed <laughs> it when it was more customers. We were under the radar, <laughs> but I think that's a little bit of what data centers, we go back 10 years, it wasn't necessarily as big of a focal point in whether it's mainstream media or in the financial community. So it's a natural evolution and maturation of the industry. It's become a big part of the conversation on a day-to-day -day basis, but what's not under the radar, it's you and the line. I mean, you guys just raised $12 billion, $5 billion in new equity investment and about $7 billion in new debt commitments or arranged by Macquarie and a few others, which you might tell us who they are. <laughs> uh, I mean, before before we get to actually help you raise all this, yep. how are you going to spend that money? I mean, twelve billion you can build. You can build a few. You might go out for that. Sure. Well, it's one of those elements where the size of data centers these days are continuing to increase. There's a lot of capital intensity in it, and we've been a firm believer that having depth and breadth of capital partners and dry powder allows us to take advantage of what we really believe is a generational opportunity in front of us today. We felt that way five years ago, and we continue to feel that way. In terms of specific uses, it's really to do what we've been doing, to continue to build out across the 45 campuses we have across the Americas in core markets targeting cloud availability zones as well as some of the emerging AI applications and use cases that are coming. Uh, so I think it's more of the same in our existing markets and there may be a couple new dots on the map along the way. How long, how long do you think it's going to take to spend those 12 billion? Let's just the rate <laughs> of things, it's not. <laughs> it's not that long. It's, it, I don't think that long. I think yeah. you'll see us uh, raising additional capital uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, in Europe of the same magnitude or even bigger? Oh, it depends. Um, it depends exactly what the pace and uptick of it, the overall demand is. Um, I think we're comfortable uh, raising. I don't think you're going to see a $12 billion announcement uh, every couple quarters from us, uh, but I do think that we're going to continue to raise additional capital along the way. Okay. Well, in terms of uh, technology infrastructure, you're going to be deploying around or developing in, in sure. somewhere. How are you going to use that cash to for, for R&D to develop new things that you're going to be deploying in your data centers? So one of the things, um, as you know, Innovation has been at the core of Align's DNA from its founding. Uh, starting with our proprietary cooling technology, the Delta Cube, uh, that where we were able to do 60 kW per rack when data centers back then were being built, 3 kW, 7 kW. So we thought we had a lot of runway and then a couple of years ago, uh, whether it's with ChatGPT and AI, uh, we definitely saw the push to liquid cooling with some of the advanced use cases. And so I think um, we announced the Delta Flow product uh, last year actually at PTC. So continued innovation um, to keep up with the pace of the innovation that's happening at the chip layer and really supporting what our customers want us to uh, do. So I think you will continue to see R&D and being at we joke the leading edge, not the bleeding edge of innovation. Um, I think you're going to see more of the same. Well, just developing your own property technology is already quite a step ahead to some of your competitors that they don't do that. Um, in terms of staying ahead in the market, because there's an arms race to build these things now, how are you going to stay ahead and how are you going to ensure that you can keep up with demand? Because there's, I mean, are you guys feeling there's more demand than supply at this stage? How are you going to keep up with that? I think one of the biggest things in a constrained, power constrained market, which the US is, especially in the core availability zones, which is where we focus our time and energy in terms of building those data centers. It's really acquiring the power earlier on. And those 45 campuses, um, they constitute a power bank of up to five gigawatts. Uh, we have over a thousand megawatts uh, currently kind of operational and leased, uh, but we see a lot of runway. So it's really going to be building out those data centers as well as trying to find innovative uh, ways to secure more megawatts in those core markets. And I think the capital 
helps because at some point it's making commitments earlier and at larger scale to lock down that power where exceedingly for these scaled campuses, we're seeing five to seven year plus wait times. Geography wise, and I love geography. Yes. I mean, you're present across the Americas. You've got a JV in, uh, in Canada with QScale. You've got all data in Brazil and, uh, and it covers Latin America. Yes. It's beyond Brazil. And then of course US, big market for you. Give us a rundown of where the portfolio is and what the plan is for this region, and then then we'll talk about the new ones. Sure. So, 45 campuses. Uh, there's one campus in Canada, uh, our JV, uh, with QScale, um, really bullish on kind of. Uh, the, where th that can go, but in terms of the larger scaled um, operations, uh, the bulk of our portfolio is in the US. It is the largest market, call it roughly 80% of whether it's least megawatts or uh, the power bank is in the US. Um, and that's across uh, now uh, coming up on not quite a dozen um, primary markets, uh, but more than a handful there. And then where you see in Latin America, we announced with acquisition of Odata, uh, couldn't be more pleased with how that is evolving um, and really supporting their growth uh, where that constitutes a little less than 20% of the aggregate portfolio. And that right now is in Brazil, Mexico, Chile, Colombia, and we have uh, announcement in Peru. Uh, so those markets and those countries, I think you're gonna see additional campuses there, as well as you'll see additional campuses in those primary markets we focused in the US. In terms of whether we you see more dots on the map, I think it'll be dependent of where our customers take us. We think we can satisfy the vast majority of the demand, whether it's in the US, or the Americas through our current footprint. But I think as we continue to lease out some of these campuses, we need to replenish that power bank. Uh, we can't stop uh, kind of making those investments for the future growth. No, you can't stop now. <laughs> no, can't stop now. Um, do you have any appetite to go beyond the Americas, to cross the ocean somewhere? I think long-term, if we're looking over a 10-year horizon, Potentially, I think right now our primary focus continues to be across the Americas and we think we have a lot of megawatts and gigawatts uh, to run through uh, there, but over time I think you could see it, um, but it's not a primary focus over the near to medium term. But would you see that to be more organic or inorganic? You kind of go by land or you go and buy someone? I think it's really tough uh, in some of those markets when you haven't been there, uh, similar to how we focused on Latin America. Sure, there was a build versus buy analysis. Do we try and do it organically? And for the scale of the platform we are, for it to be meaningful, you need to have boots on the ground. Um, and that's why Odata culturally and where our focus is, customer um, centricity was just a logical fit. If there happens to be other opportunities more globally, I think we would take a look, but I think cultural alignment is the number one criteria. I think uh, to the financial returns, you can ma make it work with a lot of different things. I joke it's spreadsheet math. Uh, you can uh, have the different assumptions, uh, but I think it's really understanding the culture and the, the real uh, growth path that's there. So focus on the Americas, but if we go international beyond that, as we said here today, would probably be an organic versus organic, um, just given those markets are already developing and we'd be late to the game. Yeah, yeah. only to see it. We'll definitely be here looking for the headlines on that one. <laughs> uh, but then, I mean, going back to this $12 billion, of course, this is going to open doors for a few more collaborations for sure. Um, yep. Within the industry, within the investment sector, um, you're going to bring in new investors and we'll get there as well. How is this going to foster your collaboration all around from, from investment to operations to different, maybe different layers of the data center? Um, how does that happen? Because it's not a one-man's job. No, no, it's definitely partnership across the ecosystem. So as I think the first focus is on the power constraints. So you're starting to see different uh, places where there's this convergence of data centers, technology at this chip level, as well as with the utility. And so we want to find partners that that's their bread and butter. One of the things about Aligned is we are there's a certain part of the stack people have asked, are, are you gonna introduce managed services? You can do more cross connects and go up the stack. 
And really, yes, that could be compelling just financially, but it's all about focus and knowing what's our lane and where we can have a competitive advantage. And that's really at the data center, the owner, operator, developer of these 15 plus year assets. As it comes to things that are slightly outside of our current purview, but are increasingly relevant, so power is probably the biggest one. That is where we have our internal team that come from the utility and power industry. But I think as we look to do, whether it's direct connection to generation or other more bespoke um, arrangements, we would really be looking to have operating partners where that's their primary focus that share what we do in terms of the customer centricity, nimbleness, all of those things. Uh, so I think, Hopefully there'll be some partnerships on that side of the space and then continue on the technology side and whether it's in the cooling technology, which is part of the core DNA, we have a partnership with Munters um, that's a developer of our cooling technology. There may be more alongside, but I think it'll really be dependent on our customers, where they want to focus, where we can be additive. Um, I think you'll see more of that, but primarily, energy focus, because that is top of mind. Okay. And Because I've got you here, picking up your brains on the state of the industry. So you've raised this money, um, but Align is not only raising this money. As you said at the beginning, there's so much capital going around at the moment. How do you characterize the state of the industry in terms of financing investment? Like, what, what's exciting? Do you see any hurdles, any any alarm bells, any good yep. bells um, across, across the continent, across the globe? So, first of all, I would say the depth and breadth of capital, whether it's on the debt side, equity side, that is focusing on data centers and wanting to be part of hyperscale data center stories. Uh, it's like n nothing I've ever seen before. It is definitely at a whole different scale. And that's based on the demand and it's the maturation of the industry. I remember almost 15 years ago when I fell into this space, it was very different, right? We were talking about a one megawatt transaction uh, we were ringing the bell on. We still want those one megawatt transactions, but it's definitely at a larger scale form factor that we're seeing. I think if you take a step back, uh, looking at, I think the, one of the common questions I've been asked over the years is, what inning are we in, using a baseball analogy? And I've said we're in the early innings every single year, so how is that possible? It's the game keeps on changing. Um, and I think we've seen the next iteration of that with AI. And I think that is going to create a lot of evolution and demand over the next 10, 15, 25 years. One of the anecdotes I heard um, that I uh, was laughing at a little bit was an analogy that Netscape Navigator is to the internet the way ChatGPT was to AI. And so 27 years ago, Netscape Navigator was there. And then if you look at two years after the inception, that was really the peak of the dot-com uh, piece. I don't think, by the way, we're at the same place in terms of credit-worthy quality, the people backing this, that we're going to have that same trough. But w at that point, if we have the benefit of hindsight, looking back over the last 25 years, I think one of the statistics I saw, I can't um, kind of verify it, but the market cap of all of the use cases of all the companies that were born out of the internet at that same point when we we're at the top of the market, it's 2% as to what it is there today. So I think that provides a very, a lot of strong tailwinds for the next 15 years. Now there will definitely, it's not always going to be a straight arrow into the right. There will be ebbs and flows, the dreaded digestion period. And so it's all about how do we make the appropriate investments and in capital allocation so we can win just a little bit more than our fair share of the market and the opportunity that's in front of us. And that's when it's an induced case is going to be so important as well to really understand the demands and the power consumption. It's all about power. But uh, Raj, I'm not going to keep you for much longer, but we are PTC25. In 12 months time, you're back for PTC26. Another one to add to the, to the list. <laughs> What's your one wish for the industry in the next 12 months? It's a great question. I think one of the things as an industry that we haven't historically done a great job at is banding together um, and really explaining what is a data center. It's not actually just using power, not creating jobs. That's not actually the right 
economic development and really what the use cases are and what a data center really empowers in everyday life that we all take for granted. So I think as an industry, we probably need to do a better job of really explaining uh, to the every man or woman why a data center is important to, in the 21st century and really what that will help empower the next wave of productivity step changes that are there. So I think uh, if it becomes a little bit more better understood, especially at the local and community uh, level, that would be my wish. Yeah. That reminds me of uh, Lieutenant Governor of the state of uh, Hawaii this morning. She was saying that this industry is, is completely invisible, but the more invisible you are, the better but at the same time you don't get the praise that you need because you're invisible. <laughs> but we are supporting the economies of the world without them knowing PR. Um, Indeed. Uh, so a bit more PR, that's your wish for next year. <laughs> but uh, Anubhav Raj, Chief Investment Officer at Line Denison, thanks so much for talking to me. Um, as for your home, thank you for watching and do check our website and social media for the latest digital infrastructure news from across the globe. At Tech Capital, you lead good reports. Bye for now.